whoever had allowed Mordred's forces such ease of entrance, whether by treachery or unimaginable incompetence, was of little matter now. The protective castle drawbridge had been lowered by the agents of evil and the attacking beasts had flooded the lower ramparts of Castle Camelot. This distraction had allowed Mordred all the time he had needed to begin his evil plot to destroy the heir to the throne of Camelot and gain control of the lands and kingdom for himself. At this moment, here in the tower room, alone with the baby son of King Arthur, Mordred was a heartbeat from victory. His plan for creating the diversion had gone off without a hitch. As a result, the end to the reign of kings was near. Moonlight glinted off the wicked-looking blade poised over the petrified, crying child, the heir to Camelot, son of Arthur, end of the bloodline, who he now held in his cold, icy hands. Momentary sting and then an eternity of peace, it's what. <laughs> he said with a sickening smile. Mordred slowly closed his eerie white eyes in near ecstasy, lowering the blade to the heart of the babe in his arms, just pressing the razor-sharp tip into the chest of the baby, drawing a first drop of red royal blood. The baby screamed in terror and pain. In the next instant, the door that Mordred had bolted behind him smashed open. King Arthur charged into the room, covered in the blood of his enemies and soaked in the sweat of battle. Stop! A silver-tipped bolt from Arthur's crossbow screamed through the dank air, striking Mordred's hand and the blade it held. The bolt was massive and was fired with such force that it tore the bladed hand cleanly from the wrist. Black blood shot from the now handless limb. Mordred cried out in shock and pain, sinking to the ground, dropping the screaming baby back into the soft crib. The liberated hand, still clutching the blade, rolled to a stop across the room. Seeming to melt in place, Mordred's once terrifying body disappeared within the ebony folds of his cloak on the cold stone floor. Only a pile of robes and a growing pool of black tar on the stone floor remained, the blood of a dark warlord, Mordred. Arthur rushed to his son's crib, paying as much attention to the fallen body of Mordred as he would a pile of soiled laundry. The child blinked through his tears, looking up into his father's eyes. The calming blue of his father's eyes was a welcome change from Mordred's fierce white pupils, and the baby's cries of fright faded to tiny whimpers. Seeing that the blade had not done real damage, he tried to console his tiny babe. You are safe now, my son. Your evil older brother has failed to take you from us. King Arthur whispered before turning his attention back to the shadows. Knowing the evil one could not be defeated so easily, the king shouted to the heavens. Damn you, Mordred. You should not have come here. Here you will only find your death. The king spoke. Baby cuddled reassuringly an arm as he began to plot how to safely escape with his son and stole a moment to wonder about Merlin and the dragon giants he had faced far below. Despite his grievous injury, Mordred's laughter drifted eerily from the far shadows. Like a bad dream, he materialized from the shadow, again in a dark robe with his face set back into the hood, showing only his glowing evil eyes. Motioning to the dead bodies on the floor with his oozing stump and sneered, Looks like you have a few more empty seats at the round table tonight, my dear father. Returning the baby safely to his crib and drawing Excalibur, which gleamed with a fire all its own, Arthur cried out, You shall pay for their lives with your own. He moved intently toward his foe. The enchanted blade chased away the room's darkness like a heavenly torch. The dark wizard slipped more deeply into the shadows, seeking his last refuge from light. Don't you want to know who lowered the drawbridge? He taunted. I'll give you a hint. It was one of yours. If your tongue continues to spill such lies, I would happily remove it before I remove your head, replied Arthur. <laughs> Chortled Mordred. Such violence! What would your offspring think? Arthur risked a glance at his son. He was still safe in the crib. 
What he didn't see was Mordred's disembodied hand stealthily crawl along the floor, its pale fingers covered with black blood. It inched like a drunken spider, slowly towards the crib. Arthur may not have seen it, but Mordred did. His glance towards the moving hand nearly betrayed him, lips curling in a sickening smile to reveal rows of black, decayed teeth. Don't you get a trial? Where is the justice, the mercy? You are no for. reproached Mordred, buying time. Arthur stalked closer to the shadowy wizard. Your jury lies at our feet. Your sentence is written on the bloodied faces of my valiant men. Your judge will be the steel in my hand. You have such a way with words, King. Mordred mocked. He knew the longer his words stole Arthur's attention away from his child, the closer he was to his all-consuming victory. The gruesome hand crept into the crib. The unsuspecting baby cooed quietly, sensing safety because his father was nearby. Enough talk. Your treacherous voice will never haunt these chambers again. I shall send you back to the darkness. Arthur raised his sword high above his head. Wait! <laughs> Mordred cried, flailing his dripping stump like a useless shield. You have to give me at least a last request. After all, we are... family. You gave up that right when you chose a path of evil. Arthur responded grimly. Please! You can kill me! Burn my corpse! Plant my head on a spike, anything! But first, I need to say one thing. Arthur snorted his contempt and held his sword ready to attack. But his integrity as a king and his consciousness as a father, no matter how treacherous his son had become, temporarily stayed his hand. He lowered his sword, just a small amount. It would be the last mistake of his life. So be it allowed Arthur. Mordred flashed a malicious, triumphant smile. He began to incant words that were far from recognisable English. In truth, they were not of any human language. These were the dead phonemes of demons and darker creatures that ruled when the earth was still red and burning. They were the words of black magic. The spell commanded Mordred's disembodied hand to quickly scale the side of the crib like a black spider, clinch the baby's neck. The infant gasped, crying out in fright. Arthur spun around, his eyes mirrors of shock to the horror before him. No! Using his good hand, Mordred grasped a sword from a fallen knight and swung it with sudden inhuman power at the king's back. The massive blow dented Arthur's armour, the force knocking him to the floor. It was the first time that the magical armour had been struck with such vengeance or had experienced such a magical force against it. Seizing the moment, the dark wizard took one long stride to the baby's crib. Upon command, his severed hand released the infant and began the tedious work of reunited with his outstretched stump. The tar-like blood twisted and pulled the tendons and muscles back together. Whole once again, Mordred scooped up the crying child, bringing him close to his chest. Arthur crawled to his feet. No, I implore you, don't hurt him, he begged. Ignoring the pleas, the wicked wizard kneeled to pick up his jagged poisoned blade, pushing it against the wailing infant's chest, just cutting the skin as a bead of blood began to appear. The baby wailed in protest. Take me instead, entreated Arthur. Camelot, the throne, my life, anything! Mordred's fiery eyes narrowed, focusing on Arthur's sword. Oh, oh indeed, I will. Indeed I will. But first you must give me Excalibur. Now. Arthur hesitated. He looked at the glowing sword in his hand with sorrow. The decision tormented him. Excalibur was the soul of his kingdom. It had protected Castle Camelot for generations. It had delivered justice to the corrupt and protected the innocent from the wicked. From the forges of Avalon herself, Excalibur was the shining beacon that was humanity's hope against the ever-present darkness. The blade could never be stolen. It could never be taken. It could only be wielded by the rightful living heir and king of Camelot. Or given. And he would give his life, and alas, the life of his own son, before he would give the sword to his enemy. 
I can't. You know that this is impossible, groaned the king in despair. Mordred snorted, as if expecting the answer. <laughs> A shame. Then I take your only child instead? He does a high toll indeed, father, but you were always a fool. His tongue spat the words of a wicked spell as he plunged the glinting dagger into Arthur's infant son. However, instead of blood or cries of pain from the baby, it was Mordred who screamed as the dagger drove cruelly through his own hand. The baby was no longer there. In less than an instant, the baby had disappeared in a brilliant explosion of purple light. King Arthur's son was gone and Mordred stood aghast with the blade driven through his own pale hand, black blood streaming to the floor below. Arthur cried out in anguish, My son! You've killed my son! Killed? Puzzled Mordred. I don't understand. I... I, I don't! Mordred stammered, at first confused, staggering backwards, and then completely enraged. Where'd you hide your magician and trickster murdering the mad? Mordred screamed. Only he could steal what was to be mine. Rising to his full height, Arthur charged Mordred with a roar, Excalibur raised and burning with fury. Mordred did not move. He merely smiled. In fact, seemingly willing to be struck down. The great Excalibur arced through the air in a silver blur as if guided by a force of a thousand men. Now feel the blade of Avalon! Arthur screamed in a fury-filled rage as he brought the massive sword down directly on the dark entity. Amazingly, it travelled through Mordred's image like a blade slips through fog. With such momentum, the sword crashed into the stone floor with enough force that it momentarily became lodged. The king was fighting an illusion. In a blink of an eye, the real dark warlock appeared behind the king. I'd be more concerned with this blade. <laughs> Mordred sneered, referring to the dark dagger now removed from his injured hand. Wise in the art of killing and very familiar with this king's famous armor, Mordred knew exactly where to aim. He shoved the deadly metal blade into the seam of armor at Arthur's underarm. <gasps> Alas, the enchanted armor could not protect where it did not cover. He felt the poisoned blade glass off Arthur's ribs and then dive deeply into flesh and vital organs. The king cried out in pain, shocked at these ominous circumstances. Pulling the king close and twisting the blade, Mordred spat in the king's ear. I don't know what you've done with the baby, Arthur, but now my words. I will find your son, and excruciating pain will be the last thing he knows. You... I am afraid I've finished. Mordred stated with assurance and released the king's heavy body to slump like dead weight to the floor. Arthur coughed, blood beginning to stain his lips. His face held nothing but disbelief. He had lost his son, his sword, and was now losing his life. He had been wounded before, but never anything as dire as this. Something on the warlock's blade burned deeply. A poison, a fear, a growing terror inside him. He was dying, and the kingdom of Camelot would die with him. Clanking metal echoed from outside the room. By now, Mordred's army would be on the retreat. But no matter, they had done their job. In any moment, a division of knights would enter in the tower room, prepared to defend their king. Unfortunately, they would be too late. Mordred looked at the deadly knife still protruding from his foe's body and chuckled. Keep it, after all. It's only a fair trade. His lips moved again, uttering incantations of dark magic. The shadows of the room began to stretch, enveloping Mordred until his body was nothing more than smoke that filtered slowly out the slither of a window into the damp night air. Behind him, life slipped away from King Arthur with barely a whisper. His knights burst into the room. Too late for the king. Too late for the baby. Too late. Too late. And no sign of the great Merlin.
In his darkest hour, had Merlin abandoned the king in the end he thought as consciousness slipped away. In the chamber far below, remnants of the recent fierce battle littered the stone floor. Here, as well as elsewhere, man and monster were strewn around Castle Camelot in pools of congealing blood. At the centre of this particular room was an immense stone. Set atop it was an anvil. If anyone were alive here to bear witness, they would have seen a brilliant flash of light as Arthur's sword suddenly appeared, embedded within the stone. Excalibur, the sword in the stone, was trapped once again.